Patients worried about the heart attack. If you don't readdress that early on, you're actually going to struggle to have a shared management. You're not on the same page as your patient. In the priming, you already need to be thinking, okay, he drinks alcohol, um, he's got possible new AF, so I need to find out what could be the triggers here. Now, it's good that you utilize information that you're given, make sure that there's nothing else going on like thyroid. With this example of a case where there has been um, previous consultation done before, I would probably not um, actually spend too long going backward. I'd rather go forward. So checking um, how we're going to manage things. Um, and then with respect to the management plan, I don't think the explanation was clear enough for the patient to understand what's the reason we're getting him on the drug. So it's important to discuss the risk yeah, and the benefits. So when you describe um, what medication you're going to start the patient on, explain that um, when your heart is beating irregularly, there is a chance that you could develop a small clot that could travel up to the brain. And, and that's why it's important that we consider medication to reduce that risk. And this is medication that some people are called blood thinners. Maybe you've heard of it. So then the patient will understand the benefits. And when um, the patient um, understand it, it's more likely that they'll be open to have it, right? Um, with regard to the exercise, I think it's important that a patient um, have an echo first before resuming exercise because it could be having other problems as well. Mustafa explained it very clearly, particularly the second time, um, and that he put my worries to rest. Um, I was a bit confused on the first before you interjected about the why I needed to check the valves as well. I didn't understand that as well as, well, is it a heart problem? Is, is it a you know, anatomical problem or is it a chemical, whatever? So I got a bit confused at that. But overall... Um, he did allay my fears and kept saying it's not a heart attack, which was my biggest concern because of my dad dying from that. And um, I was convinced that I should take start taking this medication. So that that felt good for me. Great. Thank you very much, Lloyd. So um, one thing here that I'd like to point out, if you're going to start a patient on anticoagulant, it's very important that you verbalize which one because it's good for the patient to know the name and also the examiner needs to know. Otherwise, they can't really um, score your marks for how you're prescribing. One thing that the patient kind of um, helped you here was, what is there any changes if I'm not well? Or, so one thing you need to make sure you tell them is if you do have any fall, hit your head, it's very important that you seek medical advice or if you're having any bleeding, because there's a risk that bleeding um, for, with these anticoagulants. So you have to make sure you manage this risk. Pacemaker is not usually the, the treatment. Um, so, um, most likely, if medication doesn't work, then um, patient could be referred for ablation. Um, pacemaker can be used in sometimes, but yeah, ablation would be one, another one. But you don't want to add more things to the patient, explain to them things, and create more uncertainty here. Because a patient mentioned pacemaker, then you readdress it. Are you feeling anxious about the SCA preparation? Maybe you're not getting constructive feedback. You don't know whether you're doing the right thing. If you're looking for one-to-one -one support, I'd love to help you. Click the link down in the description below to book a call with me to see how I can help you to pass your exam. I thought you, you, you battled on very well, considering he was quite fixed on just wanting to get tablets and get the hell out of your hell out of the unit. So I think you 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 kept going, which was really good. I was feeling frustrated at the beginning that I just wanted you to say, "Yeah, I need to give you something straight away to help you sleep." So I think if you if you'd have gone with that first of all and then said, "However, this is just a short term fix, and we need to look at the real reasons behind it," right at the beginning of the consultation, I think that might have helped a little bit. Uh, you let you allowed me to go on and on just on sleeping tablets, on sleeping tablets, on sleeping tablets. I was repeating myself. Um, and when you said there's a different tablet, as you can see, I didn't care what it was. I just happened to use the word tamazepam because that's what I was given. I don't know what it is. It just helped me sleep. Um, and um, when you said about the cognitive treatment that you could supply or offer, I was very sceptical about that, if I'm honest with you, to start with. I didn't really get that at all. 
Um, so maybe it needed to be explained exactly what that does and how that can really, really be helpful in the long term. That's, the, yeah, that's it. That's what Patrick felt. Thank you very much. I think that, that uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, it, it sounds very technical and speaking with somebody who um, may not have heard of this, they might be quite skeptical. So you want to make sure that your explanation is pitched at the right level. All right. Don't use these technical words. And, and um, it, it's important here in this negotiation skill assessment where you're being assessed on how you negotiate on this sleeping tablet. But first, you actually f listen actively and, and listen very well so that the patient feels they are listened and then find a common ground. This patient, they're coming to you. Yes, they're saying they want sleeping tablet, but they, they really want to sleep better, to have good sleep. That's what they want. They're not coming to you just because of the sleeping tablet. The sleeping tablet will help them to get good sleep. So that's a common ground here. So if you explain to the patient that I understand that you'd like to have a good sleep, restorative sleep right now, you don't feel that that's the case. The things that we could look into how you can get better sleep. And then by working from a common ground, it's going to be easier to explain to the patient as in with sleeping tablets, although you might get off to sleep, you might feel groggy in the morning and, and it's not really good quality sleep. However, I could give you a small um, dose for Zopiclone for three days and see how we can reset your sleep cycle to get you back to a good uh, bedtime routine and sleep. And, and hopefully you'll be able to sleep better in the long term. The sleeping tablet is not a solution over the long term though, because there is risk to it. And see how I'm actually working from a common ground and explaining what we're going to do. Then you can address the caffeinated drinks because you're working from the same place and the patient doesn't feel like it's adversarial, well, you against the patient, but it's more like you're on the same side, achieving the, the goal of getting better sleep. So they'll be then more open for the caffeinated products as in uh, this could affect their sleep, maybe to try and uh, take it early in the morning rather than late at night. If you find this video useful, then I'm sure you're going to get a lot from watching this video. Click the video to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.